recording is now being recorded. Um, so this is our January 8th, 2024 Valley Green Energy Working Group meeting. Welcome Marlena and Paul. We're happy to have you with us today. And I guess we'll just launch right in. Um, I know we have minutes, but I think we should put those uh, items for the agenda at the very end um, after Paul and Marlene leave, because I think that business we can just get to later so we don't waste our time with the two of you. So, um, Paul, I guess we want to maybe start with um, the DPU hearing, and then we can discuss the information you just sent that I forwarded it to everybody. Excellent. And if I may, I'll begin with one preliminary thing, which is to welcome Carol and her new role. It's a joy for us to be have the chance to work with Carol again. Me too. <laughs> I wouldn't come to Northampton unless I could work with you guys still. So. <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, we'll start by talking about the DPU public hearing com coming up, which is um, just to provide a little context, this is required by statute. The DPU takes it very seriously for that reason. And it's pretty much a non-event. So, you know, it's for a op you know, formal opportunity for the public to comment on the plan. And we've published notices in the Boston Globe and other places, but it's very, very rare for anybody to comment other than the people who are directly involved, um, number one. And number two, the DPU doesn't really rely on the comments in their decision. So there's not, it's important to do it and to treat it seriously, but also to recognize that it's, um, in the scheme of things, it's a minor, it's a minor event. Um, it is, well, just to go over the logistics of it, it's conducted by Zoom. There will be a DOE uh, DPU hearing officer. Typically, they'll be in very formal business dress, treat it like a serious regulatory hearing. They'll give a little introductory speech. Speakers will be in a waiting room, and then you'll be asked to join, and you'll come in one at a time, and you can give uh, your remarks. There won't be any questions from the DPU. They'll just they'll just listen. Um, for the remarks, I think it's it's helpful to have a few people come and speak um, and really to talk about, you know, I think key messages are, you know, communities have considered this carefully and there's been a lot of public participation, um, which is an area where your plan is really stellar. I mean, you have this, you know, this working group with public members and you had far more, you know, commenters at your, the public meeting you hosted than any community um, ever, as far as I know, but certainly quite a lot. Um, and so because it's to say you've treated this carefully and seriously and you've taken public comment on it. Um, and then you can talk about the goals for the plan. And the single most important thing is that you don't say that a goal is to save money. That's the one thing that that drives the DPU crazy. So you, you don't you want to say, in fact, the affirmative that you understand that savings cannot be guaranteed. Our goals are this you know, stable prices, greener electricity, and we understand that savings can't be guaranteed. If you check those boxes, perfect. Okay. Um, so I wanted to... Actually, Stephanie, um, I'm sorry. Can yep. I just... I yes, just saw sir. an email from Tom's... Is that his name, Tom from Pelham, yes. saying he's trying to get in? Okay, let me, all right, we've had this problem with him last time. All right, I will very quickly um, say that if anyone has any questions for Paul right now, um, that's what I was gonna open it up to. Uh, just bear with me one second and I'm gonna work on getting Tom in here. So how many uh, speakers do you recommend that we have? I think it would be helpful to have one person from each community, but I, I don't think more than that would be, would make, would, would would create an incremental benefit. I think three would be perfect one person from each if possible, but even if it's just two two speakers, that would be fine. Well, that would so, be a pretty quick hearing. They are quick. They take, you know, it's they're long if they go 15 minutes. Okay. So I know you said that typically there aren't a lot of people that show up at these meetings, but as you also noted that we had, the most public engagement for our information session. And I think um, 
potentially that might be true for this hearing as well. I know that I've had um, uh, inquiry from the town manager. I think the um, council president or the town manager were wondering if they should appear at this hearing. I mean, again, obviously, as you said, it's not required. It's probably not necessary, but uh, is there an advantage to having maybe a staff person and an elected official speak? Um, I guess I'd answer that in two ways. One, it's certainly true that if you have both, that shows more of, uh, and, you know, more attention to the, on behalf of community towards the program. So it's positive in that way. I don't know that it would make a difference though. Okay. That's good so to it know. Would be a fine, it would be a fine thing, but I'm not sure it would make a difference. Okay. And um, I guess what if we're, should we not be repetitive? Should we be each, because there's three communities involved in this particular application, should we maybe focus on different components of what they're looking for um, or that we what we should touch on? Um, I'd say in a perfect world, but I don't think that's essential as long as the remarks are brief. And that I should have said that earlier. You know, the expectation is, or a good thing would be to speak for a couple of minutes, you know, three minutes, something like that, two, three minutes. You shouldn't speak for 10 minutes. They, they, they you know, they don't, too strong to say they don't want to listen to you for 10 minutes, but you can make the points in three minutes and that would be good. Concise is good. Okay. And welcome, Tom. Sorry, you were stuck in the attendee I, room I there for heard, a bit. Yeah, I heard most of it, actually. I was here. Right. And Carol, thank you for... <laughs> but I was actually in at that moment. And uh, okay. the goal is not to save money. I heard that loud and clear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andra, go ahead. Um. It, it sounds like the fewer people who speak, the better. And um, this isn't the time to show <clears throat> the depth of community support in terms of turning people out. Um, and perhaps the same with our, our leadership. Um, seems to me there's more risk of um, mis speaking, um, the more people, the farther out you go from, you know, those of us who've been most involved. Um, so, yes, um, well, I, as I, a community I, member, I'm advocating for limiting who we uh, invite and encourage to come. I would second that, Andra. I, I, um, was also not really looking for additional folks to speak, just given that Paul's comments previously about this um, have indicated that less is in some ways more. So um, I, I don't think it'll be a problem. I mean, I'm assuming um, if we can only have one person from you know each community, I think makes the most sense. Um, I would defer to the town manager and provide talking points if, if he or the, he believes the council president should be the one, but um, otherwise maybe we would take like a minute each and we'd sort of break up our comments and do it that way if, you know, if they really do want to have somebody, but I don't, it won't be more than that. It'll, it'll only be myself and maybe uh, one of those two. And so wondering uh, Pelham in Northampton, Carol, Tom, where are you guys at with who you think will speak on your community's behalf? Well, I'm going to defer to Bob Agoglia, the select uh, chairperson. Um, I thought he did a fine job last time. And um, as the head of the community, I think uh, I'll I'll, uh, I'll defer to him. I'll, I'll find out from him if he wants to do that. But that's I think he will. And I'll ask the mayor what, what she would like. But can I, I did have a question. Um, I barely remember doing Greenfields way like 10 years ago. But if I remember the DPU has like a chalk full docket, right? And and is the, it, it, so it's like a full day and then we waited. You guys are very lucky. We had to go in there and wait for a very long time. That part I remember. 
And um, so I think that's the other reason just keeping it short seems like a smart strategy, right? To just... Yes, that, that's a very good point, Carol. I neglected to mention often the DPU schedules a few communities on the same day. And so they're, they have an expectation about how long these are going to take so they can get the next one teed up. So um, I think that's a good point. And I will say I did note um, on the DPU uh, notification that we need to give them uh, a response as to who's speaking by, I think it was the 19th. So we need to let them know if we plan on speaking, um, you know, in that sort of DPU notice, uh, it's, it says how to um, contact them and let them know. So we you could submit written comments as well. I think it sounds like we don't really need to do that either. We just need a few people to speak, but we do let them need to let them know we're planning to. Yes, that very good point, Stephanie. Thank you for raising that. And you can either let them know directly under the as using the procedure outlined in the notice there, or if it's easier for you and you want me to do it, you could just tell me. Either way is fine. Okay. Okay, that'd be great. I mean, in some ways, I think it would be better if we just let you know and you just submit all the names at once. I think that would that be would easiest. And you just need to know that, let's just say, I mean, they need to know by the 19th, but let's say we need to let you know by the 18th. I don't think it should take us that long to figure this out, but just say the 18th is the last day to let you know who's going to speak. Okay, so, all right. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I don't think I have any other questions about this particular DPU hearing. Anybody else have anything before we move on? Carol? Forgive me if I missed this somewhere else, but is that this is the final step to getting approved? Is that correct or no? It's a step along the way. So the DPU has to have this public hearing before they issue the order, um, but there will be other steps, not in person, but um, they'll ask, for sure they'll ask questions Well, they have asked some questions, which we'll need to respond to. And then actually after that, probably what will happen is they'll issue an order. So it's near the last step. Okay. Or did you say near the last step? Well, yes, but no guarantee how long it is between the steps. Right. Okay. <laughs> I just, that kind of surprised me there. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, Good so to usually, know. Usually the sequence is um, you, you file the plan, you have the public hearing, the DPU asks some questions, which are called information requests. And we have some of those already, and we can talk about those. And then they issue an order. But the period of time between those steps can be measured in years rather than minutes. So um, could has been in the past a long way. I don't think it will be for you, but it has been in the past. Okay, great. And Adele, you had a question about the contract, and I think this might actually even relate to some of the the requests that we just got from DPU. So maybe you want to ask your question first, and then we can have the discussion. I sent you all the information that Paul forwarded to me just before this meeting. Um, I can share my screen, or you all can follow along, but um, maybe you want to ask your question first. And sure, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry, Ginger. May I just say one last thing about the hearing, which I neglected to mention? Absolutely. There's one thing that will happen, which is a, a tiny thing, but it sometimes it creates awkwardness because people don't know how to respond. It's the DPU's practice at a public hearing to invite elected or appointed officials to speak first. This is from days when they had public hearings and there were lots and lots of people there. So they let the you know elected and appointed people go first. At other meetings like this we've we've done recently, two things happen. One, there's only a handful of people, so it doesn't really matter who goes first. But second, sometimes people are uncertain whether they're an elected or an appointed official or not, like you know, a representative of the town energy committee. So we, sometimes they don't know. So sometimes they say they're appointed, but they're not really. There's not really a lot at stake for this in the answer to this question. You can't answer it wrong, really, but it's, someone's going to ask. So they're going to ask at the beginning. If, you, if, if you're elected or appointed and you want to go first, you can go first. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. Okay, Adele. Well, um, my question is, 
to what extent can we specify in the contract and or e even in the RFP um, what kind of energy we we want? And in particular, uh, what kind of energy do we want at times of peak demand? So can we specify, for example, that we don't want energy from dirty peaker plants at, uh, at peak demand time? Etc. Um, so you can specify a lot with regard to the recs. So, and that's the way, you know, it, it, it sort of counted what energy you're getting is really what recs you're getting. In terms of the physical energy, that's really just gets dumped into a pool. So it's, you can't really say who who's getting what. Um, so you can specify the recs, but not the physical energy. Recs though aren't are annual. They're not at a particular hour of the day. So you can't say we don't want you can't say we don't want dirty peakers. But you can say, for example, we want X percent voluntary recs. We want them to come from only from wind or solar, or we don't want them to come from biomass, or all kinds of things you can specify there, but it's over it's a wreck, it's over the year, it's not in a particular hour. And to what extent can we specify what we want in terms of supply that is um, aside from wrecks? So the way it works now, or generally like in all programs, it's a, the current state of things is not really an easy way or maybe even not a way to specify the supply. So you'll you'll the way the programs work now, now we, we may evolve this program over time to take a more sophisticated approach. So I'll just describe how it works now. That doesn't mean it couldn't be better in the future, but how it works now. The town the, the towns will sign a contract with an electricity supplier. It will obligate them to provide all the electricity you want whenever you want to use it. From there, it's up to them to contract for the physical energy. And in many cases, they're in fact, almost all cases, they're not buying electricity from a particular unit, generating unit. They're just buying megawatt hours. And there are middle people in between the generators and the retail companies that you would contract with. So, um, the the sellers, these middleman sellers, they just sell blocks of megawatt hours at a certain time. And it's just up to them to get them however they want. And they're not promising it comes from a particular unit or not. And even the contracts with the sellers by and large, the generators, a generator may contract to supply a certain number of megawatt hours to the market, but they're actually not obligated to provide them from their specific plant if they they can, but they, if they want to get them some other way, they are they're free to do that. So there isn't there isn't much in the way of contract specific specifying the source in a contract. Now that's the way it typically works. That is the way it works now. There are new things coming along. There are some efforts to create this kind of specificity and to create opportunities for towns to have it. Um, or for buyers to have it, but it's um, it's a new idea at the moment, new new in the new in the new in the market. Um, so I'll I'll put it there. There we did speak recently to um, a firm that was trying to put this together, where they would they would buy electricity from. A particular generator and they were saying well we're, we're going to put together the system where you could be you wouldn't be promising getting a guarantee that 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 electricity was going to come to you but you would be getting a guarantee that that electricity was going to be put into your market the market on your behalf so not just the recs but also the electric supply that's a very that's a very new idea as we talked to them about it nobody had done it yet um we talked to one town who was initially interested in it but once they learned no one had done it yet and there was a premium cost for it, they they stopped being, they were no longer interested in it. So it's something that might develop, but it's a pretty, pretty new and undeveloped thing right now. Thank you.
Okay. Are there any more questions pertaining to Adele's, Carol? Not pertaining to Adele's, I don't think. Okay. That's okay. Feel free to go ahead. Okay. Um, in Paul's email from just earlier before the meeting, there was a mention, first of all, the letter with the request seems pretty straightforward. So yay on that. And um, thanks for the introduction on, on, on all that. But you mentioned something about the operational adder. So I'm assuming that's separate because I didn't see that in the letter. And I was wondering if you wouldn't mind addressing that, please. Yes, yeah, so that would be covered. There's one of the, I think there are just three questions, which is a good thing because traditionally we've been getting how many, Marlena, like 30 questions in the recent past. So oh, over 40, I think, for some of them. <laughs> so just three is very and, nice. And two weeks to answer them. <laughs> but the third one, the most general one, says, Amend your plan to bring it in line with the orders we've issued recently for other aggregation plans. And this came up very recently with regard to um, an order that was just issued uh, just the other day for the town of Wayland, where they had listed um, potential uses for the operational adder that were pretty similar to what we've listed in your plan. And the DPU told them they had to scale that back a bit and limit the approved uses to um, municipal staff who would work on the program or the purchase of RECs, but not include the broader uses that we had included um, in both in that Whalen plan and in, and in your plan. Now, so th that's that's what we would need to do now in order to get the plan approved now. I'll also say though, this is um, this is an evolving area. Separately, the DPU is kind of going down two tracks now. One is they're trying to approve plans much faster than they have been based on their current precedent that they've, they've long established. And that's what we're getting caught up with here on the adder. In our plan, we put in uses that the DPU had been rejecting for a while, but we put it in hoping for a better answer. So far, we didn't get that answer. That's one track. Separately, the DPU has been developing what they call new guidelines for aggregation programs, which would replace a lot of their old precedent with a simpler set of rules. As part of that guidelines, effort, many are have are pushing the DPU to allow a lot more flexibility with regard to the use of the adder. And there's a lot of support for that idea from a, a lot of sources. There's also some pushback on it from the attorney general, but there's a lot of support from it. So it's, it's a possible result that your plan will limit the uses of the adder, but within a reasonable number of months, there'll be guidelines that allow more uses. And it's the, the DPU has said it's their intent that if the guidelines are more liberal, more allow more things than your some town specific approved plan has allows, you're allowed to follow the guidelines. So you can do what's ever in the guidelines, even if your plan is more restrictive. So I think for us, to get the plan approved, we will need to follow this directive, which is reduce what the plan says about adders, but we'll continue to work on these guidelines and hope we get a better answer there, which would then you would be able to benefit from. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm you probably said quite a bit already, um, so I don't I don't know if there are any other questions about the comments that um, we just received from DPU. Any other questions regarding those? The other thing, oh, I'm oh. sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Darcy. You're muted, Darcy. I didn't really have time to die just the questions um, takes me a long time to think these things through. Um, but I would like Paul to to just explain a little further what he just said. Um, and that is, 
if we go the route of changing, downsizing our request in order to get a faster result, how will that work that we can still get under the more liberal um, and flexible guidelines? Mm -hmm. I didn't quite understand that. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're not the only one who's uncertain about how exactly that's going to work, but I can tell you what the, like where we are and what the DPU has said. So where we are is that the DPU has an existing body of precedent about what aggregation plans can and can't do. And in particular, in recent years, it's been, that's become more and more restrictive. The DPU right now is trying to do two things simultaneously. One is clear out their backlog and approve plans faster. And secondly, develop these new guidelines. So in order to approve plans faster, they're having to use their existing rules and you would fall under that. They're also working on these guidelines and they've, they've quite explicitly said, if when the guidelines go into effect, you can follow the guidelines. They haven't said exactly what else you need to do, like whether you need to, well, they said you don't have to file an amended plan either. So exactly how it's gonna work, I'm not sure, but they've said you can follow these guidelines. So if, if your plan says you can only do A and B, but the guidelines say you could do A, B, C, or D, you'll be allowed to do A, B, C, or D. Oh, so that's good. Um, but if we, get, if we get approved to do it a certain way, then we sh probably shouldn't get started doing it until we, um, well, I just am wondering a little bit about the timing of how it'll actually play out, you know? Yes, it's a good question. I don't, because the, I mean, it may be the timing will line up that the guidelines will be in place before you would get started in the ordinary course anyway. So that's an entirely possible result. Even if it isn't, we could, we could, I think we'd be able to find a way to anticipate and find a, you know, preserve a path for the communities. I mean, it's, especially with regard to the adder, the issue is about what sorts of things you can spend the money on. Well, you can't spend the money until you have the money and the money comes in slowly over time. So it'll be a while before you start spending anyway with uh, with the program because you get a little bit of money, not a little bit, you get a little money every month and then it builds up and then you can start spending it. So that's a that's a little bit, that's a little bit down the road. Paula had a question too about, to sort of follow up on um, what Darcy was asking. So if the guidelines are different from what, we were currently allowed to do and they sort of expand upon that. Does that mean we have to amend the plan to reflect that or it doesn't matter? You just basically work with the new guidelines. Yes. Yeah, so it's not clear what you're going to have to do there. The DPU has said they're not going to require you to file an amended plan for approval with them. It might be you have to amend your plan, but you just file, you know, you just amend your plan and send it to them for information or put it on the website or something. They really haven't worked out through the specifics of that. But stepping back, the reason for it is there's something like 150 approved plans out there, all with slightly different rule, you know, plan requirements about what's allowed and what's not. The DPU cannot accommodate 150 amendment requests. It would overwhelm them. They don't want to see it. So they need a solution that works for all 150. You know, if it were just you, then they could say, okay, you have to amend your plan. But since it's 150, they they can't say that. That would be paralyzing. So they need to come up with some other approach. They just haven't quite articulated it. Personally, I don't think the approach could, although, well, the approach might be, you don't have to worry about your plan anymore. Just follow the guidelines and that's good enough. That's one possible approach. Another possible approach is you want to change what you do, amend your, you know, revise your plan, but then just, you know, put it on your website or something. You don't have to, you don't have to ask us for permission. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. This is so helpful, Paul. 
and Marlena, thank you both for everything that you've done to get us to this point. It's really um, exciting because it feels like it's moving maybe even faster than we anticipated. So we think it may be less than a year for approval. I, I do. So the the DP was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know I said it out loud, but <laughs> thank you. There, you know, the, like it took for poor, you know, sometimes poor Weston and Quincy wasted, waited like three years to get approved. But, you know, there's a there's new commissioners there and it took them a while to start paying attention to aggregation, which was frustrating, but they're paying attention to it now. And I think the department approved like 10 plans between Christmas and New Year's. They're just flying through them now and having, you know, getting your information requests so much more quickly than other towns did um, is an indication of how much, is an indication of how much faster they're moving. And I think it's a it's a real priority for them. And I think they've got a system in place now to move them through. I think they've, they told me there's something like quadrupled the number of staff working on aggregation cases. They're, they're putting a lot of resources in it to try to get out from this big backlog that they have. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that we could get an approval, you know, within some, you know, within some number of months under, certainly under six, I think from here. Um, one thing you will see, I should say this. So the next step for us is we have these information requests, which mostly require plan. They say just amend your plan to say X, amend your plan to say Y, and then amend your plan to be consistent with our recent orders. What you'll get back from us to look at is a, is a red line version of the plan. There's going to be a lot of redlining on it because the most recent orders are really, really detailed and persnickety about what you say where and move this from that this section to that section and you know all sorts of minor things but substantively there won't be much of a change the biggest other than the adder the biggest change is just to be more explicit about some things like if you want to say we don't know what percentage or percentage of voluntary recs will be in our product that's fine. You just have to now say, well, this is how we're going to decide. And this is who's going to decide. And this is our decision criteria. And the decision criteria can be something very general, like, you know, based on consideration of cost and environmental benefit. And that that will be sufficient for them. The sort of criteria you would use anyway. We just need to be more, more explicit about things that were um, implied before, but not, not explicit. Go ahead, Adele. So um, it looks like in this memo, January 6th is when uh, responses are due. Uh, will you, Paul, be drafting responses for us to look at? I, I will be drafting responses for you to look at. I think, let me see what they have in for a, a deadline. Oh, January 26th, though. Yes, I will be drafting responses. Um, I will be drafting responses for you to look at, or Marlene and I will be drafting responses for you to look at. Um, we uh, obviously you have to get those back to DPU by the twenty sixth. So, will you be able to get those to us before then? <laughs> yes, or we'll certainly going to do. Um, we'll certainly make it work so that we get it to you and you have sufficient time to review before we file it. It's it's cust it's not it's sort of it's often customary to ask for additional time, which is routinely granted. I don't like to do it because we like to keep momentum where we can. Um, I will say though that we've we have similar kinds of tasks for five other plans to do at the same time, so it's it might strain our our just our internal resources a little bit. We're going to try for that January twenty sixth schedule. It's not impossible. We just won't physically be able to make it, but we'll we'll make sure that dead. You know, we'll talk to you as we go, and we'll make sure that the deadline is such that you have as much time as you want as you need to review, and we file something that that you're all comfortable with. Okay, that was pretty much my question as well. So thanks, Adele. Um, any other questions? Okay, so it sounds like at least in terms of the next thing for this group, 
um, is that we need to determine who is going to speak from each community. We need to get that to Paul by the 18th at the latest. Um, with the idea that we keep it brief and no more than two people from each and fewer if we can pull that off. <laughs> so um, however you all want to do that, just, you know, I think um, maybe just send it to the whole, you know, send it to Paul and Marlena, but copy me or the whole Valley Green Energy Working Group, um, just so we know who's speaking from each community. So I think that's at least our next to do. In terms of the public, does it matter how many people are in the audience? No, everyone's welcome. Everyone's welcome. And there's no there's no no reason for people not to be in the audience. And is it recorded? Uh, I, there's a stenographer, so we'll get a transcript. I don't know if there's an audio recording. Do you remember, Marlena? I, I, I don't recall them saying this is being recorded. I, I, I yeah, the court reporter is is the thing that sticks out in my mind. And we'll get the transcript after, and we can we can circulate that. And we can post it even on our Valley Green Energy website. Sure, absolutely. Okay. These are great questions. Thanks, everybody. Um, okay, if we don't have anything else, then I just want to give Paul and Marlena the opportunity to leave so that we can just continue our business with things like minutes. <laughs> so, um, so Paul, I guess, it, obviously, I'll hear from you if there's anything else we need to cover or I need to share with the group before the 22nd. But otherwise, we'll just, you'll be hearing from us as to who's speaking. Um, and looking forward to, you know, to getting that piece done. Excellent. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you all for your time and, and questions today. Great. Thanks right. so much. Thanks, Marlene. Thanks so much. Take care. Right. Thank, you. thank you. Okay. All right. Well, that's exciting news. <laughs> Great um, I did, yeah, I did not anticipate that we would be moving along this quickly. So that's really nice to know. Um, I mean, it's good, I think, that we're telling people longer because if it happens sooner, then that's all the better. So I'm just going to, um, sorry, I'm opening up my files here so I can uh, display the minutes. Um, and let me see, I don't think, yeah, we don't have any attendees, so we don't have anybody here for public comment. But just give me one moment. Okay, give me more than a moment. Talk about your holidays. <laughs> what snow did you get up there? Oh. Oh, you're, I keep forgetting where you are. <laughs> yeah. I'm in I jealousy. Florida. I forget. It's not, yeah. it's never been snowing here. Yeah, we got like eight inches in Northampton, I think, or or maybe a little. They said ten on the news. I'm in. It's the beautiful today. snow. Yeah, it's lovely. Where the roads really are clear easy. and the sun's out today, which I love when it's sunny the next day. <laughs> I kept Very my fun. holiday decorations up so that there would be twinkly lights while the snow was in the background. I thought at least <laughs> one weekend because I felt so cheated. <laughs> so. It was really lovely. Um, all right. So minutes. I will share my screen. I don't know if folks have, have folks had a chance to look at the minutes yet. Yes. I didn't. If okay. I could, uh... All good. That's okay. Uh, that's why I will share. Give me one second. Have you been seeing the SpaceX launches, Adele, from where you are? <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Oh, you're muted. I don't know if you answered. There was uh, there was one yesterday when well, we were out walking and somebody said, oh, did you see the the launch? And we missed it. <laughs> oh, my sister was, she's down in uh, Delray and they were out trying to watch and, oh, it was overcast, I think. Right? Anyway. Yeah, it was. But kind um, of wild. All right, the minutes are up. Okay. Chit chat's over. <laughs> so, um, so I'll just scroll through and give you a chance to sort of quickly uh, read them, and then we'll I'll stop sharing, and then we can do a vote. If I'm going too fast or slow, let me know, Carol. It seems like there's been a lot of action since these minutes. Yes. Okay, good. You can you can keep. It's Please, more, thank you. I, I mean, and really, it's more what Paul and Marlena are doing. There hasn't been a big requirement of us to do anything. It's more what they've had to do. That's part of the reason they're my favorites. Yes, they're really, they've been so great. Really great to work with. They are awesome. And Paul's so knowledgeable. It's really, ah, I know, really wonderful to have him. <laughs> um, I'm so glad things worked out the way they did. All right, you can. Um, is there much more? <laughs> These were kind of long. There is a lot. Because, you uh, know what? Can I? I'll just abstain if you have a. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. you can abstain. Okay. Um, and unless anybody else wants me to continue. If I don't hear someone affirmatively say affirmatively request that I continue, then I will stop sharing. Okay. And thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So um, the votes are just from the three community staff folks. So um, Tom, you want to go ahead and make the motion to approve? Or I will make the motion to approve. Okay, I guess I'll second. Okay. <laughs> and uh, then the vote, Tom. Approve. And I also say yes to approving the minutes. And Carol, you is it to... okay to abstain? Yes, you can. Okay. You still, still pass. Thank you. What's What's the date again, Stephanie? So these were the. This was these. Um, September 22nd. No, these are the September 22nd minutes. The August 11th still haven't been done yet. So I apologize. I'll have to get to those. You weren't around, Darcy, for that meeting, I don't think. Or Oh, okay. So I'll get to those um, at some point. <laughs> I'll get to those. Um, okay. So let's see. Did we have anything else on our agenda? I think that was pretty much just opening the agenda because I didn't have it open. Um, yeah, I think that was pretty much it. So um, I think there was so much, God, this, I'm glad we recorded this session because there was so much um, information in terms of next steps and what we can potentially expect. I think that was really super helpful. So, yeah. I mean, we Could have a few minutes Sorry, go ahead, Andra. Yeah, um, could we schedule a meeting of um, the JPE working group, whatever that's called, um, and have a presentation from local energy advocates? We had a retreat yesterday with um, about 35 people attending for three hours, and <laughs> it was really amazing that they stayed with it. It was I guess to our credit that we planned it well and 
we had five speakers who you would know all of, I'm sure. Yeah, I heard it was great. great. I heard it was a great list of, I saw the list of speakers. They looked really great. So yeah, absolutely. Um, before we do that though, um, I just want to, one thing I was going to actually ask while we have everybody here is if there was any aspect of the sort of testimony uh, for the public hearing that anybody wanted to specifically cover or points. I mean, I know Paul sort of sounds like just keep it simple, but is there anything, anyone we wanted to break this up a little bit or does it matter if we all just sort of say what we want to say within two to three minutes? Any preference? No. You're just going to let Bob say whatever in two to three minutes. Well, um, yeah, hopefully we'll give him the talking points, but yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there weren't, that, those were not a lot of talking points. I mean, I feel like we could say what we need to say in a minute, even. I don't, right. there's not a lot to say. So, um, I have one suggestion. I, I sh yep. meant to bring it up while Mar Marlena and Paul were still on, but um, given that the most one of the unique aspects is that it's three communities, um, somehow reflecting on the degree of cooperation over the years among the three communities um, might be helpful. I, I think if I spoke, that was something I was certainly going to touch on if the town manager decides that he's going to or the council president is going to, in addition to me, I, I would definitely have brought that up just having been, you know, involved from the right out the gate. I feel like we've had quite a process and it's been very thorough. So I I intended to sort of bring that up myself. Um, so it'll definitely get touched on at least from me. I assume, I don't think he would, um, uh, as far as Amherst goes, I'm sure that, um, I would definitely be one of the folks to present or speak and provide testimony for Amherst. So it's either going to be me and someone or just me is my guess. So I will definitely bring that up. Um, anybody else have any strong feelings about anything? All right. And if anyone has any questions for me prior, you know, feel free to email, call, reach out, um, and we can touch base. So I'm just assuming that, you know, Andrew Darcy, Adele, you all will be in attendance, obviously. Yes. Um, probably I'll a lot try. of others. I may not make it. Okay. Um, well, as they said, it will be recorded. So, you know, we'll definitely be posting it um, on the website. So I'll, we'll make sure that everybody gets the a copy of the proceedings. Carol, you have a question? I do, and I'm almost embarrassed to ask, but um, I think I'll, I'll be following up with you afterward. But... Um, on the 22nd, that's the hearing with DPU. Even though the letter from today says the information is not due till the 26th. So Correct. this is our hearing period. Okay. Correct. Just wanted to confirm. So that's an even better sign, I guess. The Their questions are such softballs. I, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my only. Very good. Yeah, my only concern, although it's not even really a concern, is just the getting our plan to reflect, you know, what currently is allowed and in, in, on the basis of some of the most recent decisions or orders. Um, but I don't, I mean, to me, I just think it makes sense if, um, if that's just the only way we're going to get it approved quickly and now, then that's what we do. And assuming that the guidelines will be more expansive because it just certainly seems like there's a lot of pressure for them to do so. You know, it's certainly not just us asking. So right. Uh, I think, yeah. I, I have kind of a chill attitude, I guess, because I've been through this before. We, we were two years getting beat up 
because we were the first ones to really try to push the aggregation to include, to make it a, you know, a, a vehicle for a green agenda. And, and we got thrown out on the adder. So the fact that it's in there, it seems very promising. So I'll just say from my, you know, experience with, with this whole procedure, I, I have a good feeling that, that it's going to work out. And honestly, the, the toughest part has been, and it seems like it still is just determining what to do with that adder that, and, and um, so I, I'd say, again, I, and the fact that it can be expanded afterwards, that's what I'm thinking. It sounds very reasonable is what's going to happen. So it, it all seems, so maybe that's my job. I'll, I'll be the one who sprinkles a little <laughs> fairy dust around. <laughs> <laughs> I did say it was going to be six months, which was kind of a slip at, at our last uh, NESC meeting. And then afterward, I was like, oh, God, because you were like, it could be three years. I'm like, no, but <laughs> well. maybe. <laughs> we'll see. I'm going for six months. I'll take a bet if anybody's up for it. I was, well, I was actually saying it had been, it had well, been other three years, yeah. but we were anticipating about a year. I've, I've been okay. pretty much saying a year um, that, you know, I don't, because I didn't think others three-year experiences were going to be art. I didn't think ours was going to be that long. Um, especially given how much community support we had at the, at the comment session. I mean, it was long and thorough, so, um, and it's recorded, so I you have it if you haven't watched it or seen it. Um, it, was, it was a good session. It's a really good session. Great questions, and Paul even commented that we had really sophisticated uh, attendees, public comments. So, um, you know, I think probably in part due to our advocates that are here. <laughs> so. Anyway, great. Well, this is all really exciting. Um, so on that note, then we'll, we can schedule a JPE meeting. Um, it's, so that's not going to be this link. Um, in fact, this was a whole different link. Um, I just opted, I was having some issues with Zoom, so I just decided to make a whole new link for today's meeting. And we can actually use this link going forward so that I can add meeting dates. Um, so for the Valley Green Energy Working Group, this will be the link that we'll continue to use just as a heads up, I will, you'll probably get um, a notification from me after this meeting because I'll just add more dates. Um, so as far as the JPE, um, I guess we can look at our schedules. I'm going to be, Carol and I actually will both be away at the end of next week at the MMA conference. So um I think we won't likely be able to do something before the DPU hearing. So maybe right after the DPU hearing to folks the week of the 29th. Do folks have time either Monday, well, any day that week? So you're, you're saying you don't think that we'll be able to get it in on time? Get what in on time? The the if the if the if it's due on the twenty sixth. Oh, I well, I think. Uh, oh, see, so I didn't. I mean, I think we'll get comments, but I don't think we'll be able to have a meeting before then. I mean, if Paul and Marlena are able to give us feedback, I think what we would have to do is either just send me your feedback directly because we can't have an exchange. I I seriously doubt there's going to be anything we're going to need to have a big conversation around honestly um this, so, this, we're talking not about the valley green energy working group <laughs> we're, yeah we're talking valley about the jpe having a jpe meeting is what i'm talking oh, about oh, 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 but oh, as far I, as those comments go but you did bring that up darcy and that is a good point like that's a vge meeting so and sorry carol i know this might be confusing but we were dividing these meetings up to focus on the, the Valley Green Energy Working Group, which currently, um, actually, I think they both need to be posted now um, because we have an MOU. So I think we, um, 
we were dividing our meetings up between the Valley Green Energy, which is what we just had with Paul, and we were having a separate joint powers entity meeting to sort of talk about moving that process forward. So they're kind of related, but they've been separate. So, or they started to be separate. I thought so, that until the JP was formed, it wasn't a public entity, but can't hurt to post it. Well, uh, we have an MOU, and that's why I'm reluctant to uh, just um, my understanding that it was once we had the MOU signed that it was going to require us to post. And I know that's true for, I mean, we knew that for certainly for the um, Valley Green Energy. We don't, I mean, I just think it would, it's always probably better to be safer than sorry. So Carol, the um, joint powers entity um, was given a name <laughs> years ago of Valley Green Alliance. So we mm -hmm. would have VGE working group and VGA working group. <laughs> Yes. So just okay. to confuse you. <laughs> so um, it doesn't yeah, so, take much. Well, with all these letters, but exactly. I understand um, very little. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to learning more. But um, yeah. So. All right. So the why don't we say the week of the 29th? Let's focus just on Valley Green Alliance right now so that we can have the presentation from LEA. So local energy advocates, which is the advocacy group that Adele, Darcy, and Andra formed and are, I guess, the primary, um, the point for, that, the for, the, uh, for the board of that group. Okay. So the week of the 29th, I just need folks to tell me what is possible for you. Right now it's open for me. Open for me also. And I know, Darcy, sometimes you've had conflicts on certain days, so. Yeah, on Mondays and Wednesdays, basically. Okay. Um, and there's no time on either of those days that would work for you? Of which days? Of Mondays and Wednesdays are just completely out. Well, I moved today for this meeting. Um, it, um, it, you know, I'd rather, yeah, I could probably um, move it, but it would be better to do it on a Tuesday if we could. Is okay. Tuesday out? How does Tuesday work for you, Adele and Andra? Um, later afternoon is better for me. Um, Tuesday the 30th. I, I, I usually babysit in the morning Tuesday. Thursday mornings are generally open. Um, for me too, except that I'll be on the train that week. Um, although, I don't know, maybe I can be at the meeting on the train. <laughs> I don't know. Um, How's see. Tuesday for you, Tom? Tuesday is better than Monday for sure. Okay, so Tuesday, what time works for you, Tom? Um, were we talking an hour? Yes, and probably in the afternoon. So, um, two o'clock. Yeah. See, I, I have something too, so it would have to be like three thirty for me. <laughs> mm, I don't know that I could do three thirty. Um, I could do three. Tom would one o'clock. So, or Andrea, could you do one? Um, one is probably better than three. I might not be able to stay the whole time. I can do one. Okay, Carol. Yep. Adele Darcy. Yes. Okay. So this is a Valley Green Alliance meeting. For Tuesday, January 30th at 1 p.m. Great. And I will send us a link for that meeting. And I do need to jump now. So. Me too. Okay. 
Great. Yes. Well, yep. we are at three o'clock. So thank you all so much. Great meeting. And I, yeah, look forward to uh, hearing from you all about Tom and Carol, who's going to speak. I know you have Bob, but yeah, just let confirm. Or we could just have one spectacular speaker who just covers it all. No, <laughs> I'm not kidding, but I am kind of. But um, can I ask a favor on this? BGA meeting. Yes. Would someone be willing to do like a quick intro and or uh, purpose? I, I do have experience with municipal aggregation and I've read that plan from 1997 several times, but uh, I just want to understand what the intention is better. And I can talk to you okay. off. I could talk to you offline about that, and then if you want it in the meeting, we could do more. But I can give you. I can bring you up to speed. Okay, great. If that would just be, if everyone's okay with that, so that we don't take meeting time with that, if that's okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. So, Carol, um, if you, I have a meeting right now, but yep, if you have yep, time this not afternoon, a problem. I'll call you. you okay. You, you Thank you. Share, you could share the plan with Carol if you want to really overwhelm her. We ha well, she's got everything. I think I've seen that already. I just haven't she's... read it thoroughly. Yeah, she's got everything. I'll just give her the cliff note version. <laughs> so, which is still lengthy. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. And I will uh, see you soon. Thank you.